don't need a return ticket where you're going. This is a one-way journey. Straight down! I'm Dominic Diamond, I'm back, and I'm grumpy. Each week we'll select people, some of them physically attractive, others laughably ugly, and we'll invite them down here to our dark dominion, where it's gloomy, depressing, but, as old age pensioners will be happy to know, the central heating is always on full. So, let's go over the Games Master for the first challenge of this gorgeous new series. Greetings, one and all. I searched feverishly for a suitable game for our first challenge and came to the conclusion that it could be none other than Mortal Kombat 2. The new friendship moves may please those of a more delicate constitution, but of course no Mortal Kombat game will be complete without those sensational fatalities. I selected three pairs to take part in this bloody battle of wits, and um, I may add just a little something extra to spice things up. So, for the first challenge, please welcome Graham Duffy, Daniel Boutros, and Zen Fusion. Okay, now Duff, we'll start with you. Now, you had a bit of an unpleasant experience with a, a slightly dodgy import copy of Mortal Kombat 2. What happened? Yeah, I was playing as Shang Tsung and I did the backflip and he stopped halfway. And when I did the fireball, it came out of his backside. Oh, so like a, a mortal madras. Zen. Now, Zen, you actually met Duff through playing Mortal Kombat 2. Tell us about that. Well, what happened was, um, Graham was on holiday and he was playing Mortal Kombat 2 in the arcade mm -hmm. and some guy come up to him and says, I bet you'll never beat Zen. <laughs> so we gave him a number and yeah. there he is. And that was it. Oh, that's really nice. I, I, I feel like Silla Black. I feel like Silla Black about twice a week actually, to tell you the truth. Uh, finally, Daniel, uh, do you ever feel like Silla Black? Once a month, yeah. Once a month. Okay. Right, okay. So what we're going to have here is uh, these two are going to take on probably the most frightening character in the game, Baraka. <laughs> uh, Mr. Baraka, sir, um, is it okay to shake your hand, Mr. Baraka, sir? Okay, lovely. Thank you for coming on. I know you're a busy man. Um, let's take a look at these weapons you've got there, Mr. Baraka. Look at these. That's pretty scary. Um, Bit of a problem picking the old nose, though, I'd imagine, though. No? Not at all! Oh. Yes! <laughs> well, now we've established Baraka can pick his nose, we'll let Duff pick his character. Andy Hutchinson, Games Master's resident special move expert, is with us. Uh, Andy, we know all about your moves. What about uh, Jax, I think it is, we've got first up here? Well, Duff's he's got, got three special moves. He's got his fireball, his ground slam, and his grab. And, of course, he's got that very special finishing move which is the arm decapitation. Oh, well, we'll uh, look forward to that one. So, best of luck to Baraka and Duff. Let's start the fight. Well, obviously, you see Baraka with the skull on the left-hand side, Jax in the black pants on the right. The energy buzz on the oh. screen is how well they're doing. The more green they are, the more healthy they are. Baraka coming in with that interesting slice and dice move. Oh, that was a good job oh. from Jax. Slam jam, thank you, oh. Takes a bus bout. So Baracus beats Duff, and now it's time for Daniel to try his luck. Best of luck, Daniel. Here we go. Right, Baracus on the left, Kung Lao on the right. You see the energy bars at the top of the screen. Off they go. Oh, lovely spinning move there. Fight Hutch, isn't it? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. We're seeing all the special moves coming in. Right, he's here. coming back strongly. And then, oh, we saw the teleport just then. And there's a block with a clock on at the back. Yeah, that's right. That's actually an Avon lady. <laughs> How did you always get this? That's right. <laughs> Kung Lao is really great. Oh, dear, there's a man he's in two full of faces. So, Daniel wins that one. Barakas has won the feet. Now it's time for Zen. Okay, best of luck, Zen. Best of luck, Barakas. Here we go for the third and final bout. So, Katana's the girl in the blue on the right. Barakas still has his skill in there. White grubby best on the left. Oh, first blood to Katana there. Challengers, okay. First of all, from Duff and Zen, a quick excuse as to your uh, poor performance, Duff. Well, he's got me a dress and he's got a few uh, mates as well. <laughs> That's fair enough, I understand that. Zen? I just didn't want to hurt him because he wouldn't speak to me again otherwise. That's true, and because you, you like making friends through Mortal Kombat too. Well, that's it, yeah. So that's fine. Uh, finally, Daniel, uh, you sliced him in half in the end. Yeah. Is this uh, normal behaviour for a, a lad with your hairstyle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine, the less said about that, the better then, but congratulations, Daniel, because he's won the first Games Master Golden Joystick of the Series! <laughs> While our challengers argue over who can pull the most birds following their TV appearance, we'll take a look at today's reviews. If we were being harsh, we'd say that Alien v Predator was a doom rip-off trotted out to boost flagging Jaguar sales, but we're not, so we won't. You can play three different characters. You can be an alien, a predator, or a marine. With the marine, you get tooled up with some excellent weapons, you've got some great guns, and you get some really creepy moments as you walk around this rather dark and eerie space station. Walking around the space colony, you don't get to see that many aliens or predators. They're really rather spaced out, and when they do come and attack you, they're normally in groups of three or four. Um, this does tend to make for rather boring gameplay, as you know, you're just walking around with absolutely nothing to do. Alien vs Predator has a lot of problems, but I think they're sort of uh, eased by the overall size of the game and the amount of challenge that's there. It's probably the only thing in the Jaguar that's actually worth the cost of the cartridge. Um, and it's certainly better than things like Trevor McFur. Now we have the very maturely titled Balls. A few years ago I would have made some pathetic joke about this title, but I'm grown up now, you'll be pleased to hear. God. The characters are particularly quirky in Balls. There's um, ostriches, clowns, strongmen, scorpions, and they all have attack patterns and special moves that sort of relate to the kind of character they are. This works quite well and it makes for a bit of a novelty, along with obviously the 3D aspect of the game. It's fluid, it's fast, it's like Virtua Fighter, very difficult to control, and it takes a long time to get used to it, but once you do it, it's actually really good fun. Finally, we know Smash Tennis has been out for a while, but we'll still review it, A, because it's fab, and B, because we feel like it. All the shots are under your fingers. You've got buttons for lobs, you've got slices, top spin, all sorts of play. You can play at the net, you can play at the back of the court, doubles, singles, it's all there. Apart from just being a great tennis simulation, Smash Tennis has a lot of hidden secret options and bonuses. Yeah. For example, on the beach course, you can hit the palm tree, knock a coconut out, and you, you don't get any points or anything, but it's just a nice little touch. On a rainy Saturday night, this would probably be an ideal game. You can invite some of your friends around, plug them all tap in, and away you go.
Tonight's celebrity guest is just making a last-minute call to his accountant in Zurich. While he does that, let's find out what he'll be playing. For my second challenge, I've picked the game that runs circles around the opposition and leave other footballing games on the bench. Super Sidekicks 2 on the Neo Geo. The contrasting styles of Brazil and England will come together today and I'll be looking for players to make the most of the variety of moves they have available to them. Most importantly, strikers must use their special chance option, which, um, if activated, gives goal-hungry players a pot shot on goal. Right, players, let's give it 110% or the dog gets it. Because it's the first show in the series, we're in an extra special guest type situation. Please welcome the star of My Blue Heaven, Gag Tag, Do The Right Thing and Fantasy Football. All these shows and not one Daz commercial inside. Frank Skinner! Yeah. Now, what Frank, I, I was just—it's a sort of a gothic tis was, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> Listen, Frank, I was basically all the shows uh, that you're doing. Possibly the most interesting thing for me is what was it like to work with the legend that is Terry Wogan? Well, it was—I was very excited when I first got there. I just wanted to touch the hem of his garment, you know. <laughs> but when I got used to it, he's in fact a very lovely man, and I think we could all learn a lot from him, Dominic. You know, especially about hair pieces. That's Meaning what, exactly? <laughs> okay, well, you'll be playing a very lovely person tonight, Frank, well, actually. Oh, marvellous. Please welcome Hugh Williams. Yeah. Well, Hugh. Yeah. Okay, now, Hugh, um, Frank's obviously from Fantasy Football. You're playing a football game tonight. Who do you support? Um, well, I did support all, all the shots. But they're, 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 not, they're not in the league anymore. No, very sadly, it was upsetting time. They got kicked out, didn't they? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Right, while I advise Frank on suitable pension plans, we'll take a quick commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. Our special guest tonight is Frank Skinner, star of every single TV show in Britain this year. He'll be playing against Hugh Williams, who hasn't starred in any TV shows this year apart from this one, but he is actually quite a nice bloke. Brad Burton from Amiga Action is in the dugout with me. Brad. Give us some tips on what's the best way of scoring on Super Sidekicks 2. I think what you've got to do here, Dominic, is you're going to have to get hold of that ball, keep hold of that ball, and whack it in the net. That's the bottom line, really, mate. Very clever one there, Brad. <laughs> OK, best of luck, Frank. Best of luck, Hugh. Let's go to kick-off. OK, so Hugh is playing Brazil, playing from right to left in the famous gold shirts. Frank is playing England, playing from left to right in the white shirts. Now, Brad, uh, each team's got a, got a couple of special players. That's good, mate. When well, each of the teams have an ace player, that player is your best striker. He gets within the scoring distance, he's going to walk it in there, and he's going to score. Chance, here we go. What he's got to do? Oh, it's in! It's in! It's one nil to Brazil already! <laughs> oh, that's the start of Yeah, he's got an advantage here, Dom. When you get in certain positions, the chance box pops up, and you're going to position the cursor where you think he's going to score. Well, this is it. Frank is going to have to get his hat together, pull his socks up, and get it on. It's not as good as playing football as it is. So the guy that uh, pulled his socks like his name. I've got another chance of a three. That's an equalizer. And Hughes. Hughes keeper stands still. I think uh, the keepers aren't taking enough of that up your guts thing. <laughs> I think. So it's England 1 and Brazil 1. Okay, Brazil kick off. We'll both kick it off, guys. Okay, Brazil now. Uh, that's so a chance to go to the wing. What's the wrong way now? No, no. Tips it up. Oh, that's the ace player now. He's done the chance to get it. Okay, here we go for the start of the second half. England on the attack, making their way forward. That's you, got up the pitch now. Frank will draw some England. He's got some dirty tackles in there, fellas. Come on, Frank. England on the attack, he's got a chance. He's got a chance again. Goal to England. England to Brazil too. Still no sign of movement from his goalkeeper. And he's just sucking all the corners out here. Okay, here goes Brazil. That's a break down the wing. Here we go. And there you go. You go, 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 go. It's a lovely little pass. Just outside the box there. It's England 2, Brazil 2. So with the score tied at 2 all after normal time, we go into sudden death penalties. Whoever misses the first one loses. Let's start the penalties. Just two other yeah, yeah. Yeah. The first penalty now. What would you recommend here? Oh, it's a save! It's the first save the keeper has made in this whole match, which means Frank Skinner's England and misses their first penalty. It means if Hughes Brazil gets this in. Here we go. 
minutes, Brazil have won. Oh, 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 I thought that was going to go in, Brad. Yeah, I was gutted, gutted. Okay, here we go. Frank's second penalty. Oh, Which way, mate? Which way are we going here? He's going right for the keeper again, right for the middle. So England missed two. Now will Brazil put the second chance away? They did it in the World Cup final. Will they do it here? Oh, he's saved it! A goalkeeper! And now at last, the keeper's a flame, Brad. Let's go for it, fellas. Okay, here we go. Frank's third penalty. Different tactics have been gained. We've already had Stuart Pierce and Chris Waddle. It's there! Yes! And score! Go Which means that, that Hugh needs to score with this penalty, otherwise Frank has won. It's very tense here. The golden joystick depends on this one. <laughs> Still nothing can split <laughs> these two. We got England's fourth penalty. Get those gloves on. Go keep us spreading himself. He's got now, what's more, if Hugh Williams Brazil scores this, they have won. It's very tense here. They line up. Yes! Hugh Williams Brazil wins the challenge! Skin up, Dobby, no words. Oh, what a sickness. Right, now Hugh, it was very tense at the end there, penalty was, shootout. What was. what was going through your mind, well, that, was, that final penalty? I was worried about Frank all the way along, but I knew with his comedy routine and everything else, it was just quick speed that he was relying on, and I was relying on the skill. Skill won the day, Frank? Well, one of the problems I had that was that I didn't realise that we weren't going to change ends at half-time. So I, I spent the first half of the second <laughs> half attacking my own goal, yeah. right, which was a bit of a mistake. And now tell us about the tour you've got coming up, Frank. I, I start touring, I start in Guildford on October the 1st, <laughs> and I do uh, 56 dates in two months. So, so is that the biggest tour ever? I think it's the biggest tour ever in the world by yeah. anybody. <laughs> All right, best of luck with that, Frank. Cheers. But the golden joystick goes to Hugh Williams. <laughs> Of another round of applause for today's special guest, Frank Skinner. <laughs> okay, now it's time for many burning questions from Super Mario to the continued employment of Danny Baker to be answered in the consultation zone. Welcome to my consultation zone, where the lost souls among you can receive a moment's solace from your game playing angle. Who's first will draw personal attention? Hey, game master. When I'm playing Mortal Kombat 2 on the Mega Drive, I keep seeing strange characters hiding behind the trees in the Living Woods level. Who are they? The characters you see appearing are Smoke and Jay, hidden commoners that only the privilege can access. To unleash Smoke, keep an eye out for the little chap who pops up now and then, shouting Toast. As soon as he appears, you must press Start and Down together. Instantly, you will find yourself face to face with Smoke. You can only reach Jade if you're playing a one-player game. Work your way through the battle plan until you're fighting the character proceeding the mysterious question mark. Now, here's the trick. Defeat your opponent using only low clicks, and lo and behold, you'll be transported to face Jade. Any other questions on this beat-em-up gore fest? I've heard there's a secret mode on Mortal Kombat 2 on a SNES where you transform into a different character when you get beat. Indeed there is. Turn on your console while holding down the left and right buttons. Keep holding them, and after a few seconds, you'll be greeted by the figure of Shang Tsung. Now, when you enter the game, you'll find yourself in the secret two-player tournament mode, where you can select a team of four players to fight with. How's that? Oh, thanks, Games Master. Well, that's as much help as I'm prepared to offer at the moment. See you next time. Now it's time to go back to Games Master to find out what tonight's final challenge is. Tonight's final challenge is on the much-awaited Classic TV Earthworm Gym. Two contestants will have 60 seconds each to collect as many neutron capsules as possible on the first level of this humorous platform rock. Players who watch out for the dog at the start of the level will attempt to pull your pants down and waste valuable time. Good luck. Playing Earth One Gym tonight, we have Eddie Wheeler and Tim Diggle. Welcome, Eddie. Welcome, Tim. 
OK, now, Eddie, what would you like to do in your spare time? Oh, go down to a local club, dance club. Dance club, but a dance rave kind of thing? Just dance music, yep. that's all. Uh, Tim, um, we were talking before and about crisps, funnily enough, weren't we? And uh, would you remind us, what's your favourite type of crisps again? It has to be cheesy what's it? OK, right. Just before uh, Tim and Eddie play our front, Jim, we've got a little special feature on some of the background to the game. Earthworm Jim is the latest creation from official rich bloke Dave Perry, the man responsible for Aladdin and Cool Spot. Jim starts off as an Earthworm, finds a spacesuit and gets transformed into a superhero. These things happen. As Earthworm Jim battles his way through 30 money spinning levels, you see a cute little puppy dog who turns a bit rottweiler if you let him get hurt. He indulges in some head-to-head -head battles with Psycho Crow and there's five secret stages known as the Dark Rooms hidden in level 5. But what happens when Jim finally reaches his fairy tale princess? I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Okay, Earthworm Jim, any tips for our two challengers? Um, keep moving, essentially. There are, there are plenty of neutron capsules around, but if they shoot the, the baddies, then uh, more, more are revealed. Okay, then. Best of luck. We're having Eddie going first. Each contestant gets 60 seconds to collect as many neutron capsules as they can. Eddie, your time starts now. So off goes Eddie, you can see the, the time ticking down the top and centre of the screen. His energy is on the top left of the screen. Oh, it's 40% just now. You did see you should try shooting the bad guys as well, Simon. That's right, uh, he obviously didn't listen to me. He's launched the cow, that's essential to the duet. Top right icon on the screen is the total neutron capsules. He's got 40 seconds six now. He's only got six or Simon. Another couple there. Halfway through the time, 15, 17. This is getting a bit better now, Simon. Yeah, up to 17, doing okay for himself. They're quite tricky those powers, they're the bounce of the Yeah, oh, missed, missed a few there. there. We're going back, I think. 20 seconds left, 20 captures collected. That's bizarre, that one of life's strange coincidences. It's a conveyor belt now, Simon, isn't it? It's a bit trickiness. It's going to work his way up, up to the top there, yeah, doing okay. 10 seconds left, 29 capsules. There are loads at the top there, if you can just reach them. 5 seconds left, 4, 3, so 34 capsules, 2. Not a bad time, one. so 36. That is it, a total of 36 neutron capsules for Eddie. Eddie, please make way for Tim. Best of luck, Tim. Off you go. OK, Tim, 60 seconds begins. Time in the top middle of the screen. Set the propel, top left. Another neutral capsules, top right. 36 to beat, and uh, he's got none. He's about zero after the past ten. I think he wants to start uh, getting some quickly. Right, he's lost his minus lights again. He's going to watch this grow. It's a pesky. Three neutral capsules, 46. This is not good, Simon. Not, not at all, no. He's uh, going in an upward direction here. He's, he's all over the place. Through the time. There's quite a few up there, he needs to keep moving. I think it's only what now is he gets further through the level than, than Eddie did, really. <laughs> but three of us saw, 20 seconds left, 23 now, he's actually beating. He's actually doing better than what Eddie did at this stage now. Quickly, if oh, he just avoids He's up there, eight seconds left, Come he's on. on 31. 33, five seconds left, he needs oh, to be more if people. If he can get this, he's done it. Fantastic. He's done it. And finishes with 38, which means that Tim is the winner. Tim. Eddie, I thought that score would have been good enough, actually, to win, but in the end, unfortunately, it wasn't. What, what went wrong with your performance then? Well, well, I never did enough jumps. Tim did a brilliant comeback, and it was very close anyway. That was, it certainly was. Uh, Tim, it was just right at the end, that last dip you got it. Were you, were you quite confident throughout? No, it's kind of like, really like sweating, you know. But, uh, well, listen, Tim, this, uh, my friends tell me, and a lot of them are figurine experts, is a Makeet of Earthworm Jim. It's actually worth a lot of money and the shiny boys have made it up for us especially. And uh, so you are going to get that actually. You can buy a lot of cheesy watches for that. And uh, as well as that, of course, Tim, you have won the Golden Games Master Joystick. <laughs> Round of applause again then, Tim and Eddie. <laughs> right, I'm off now to put dried bogies on the outside of people's noses. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>